Today we want to introduce to you uh, our research that we started, uh, Social Cultural Aids Provided in Manga and Children's Books for ER in German. Uh, yeah, a small introduction, and we will talk about the small problems and the research so far and what's next. Um, first of all, I just, I, I'm an English teacher, so um, for ER in English, um, my experience of ER has been generally that the students um, have not chosen to study English. Um, they, I, I consider them sometimes false intermediate. Uh, this is a, often we hear about false beginners. Um, I feel a lot, a lot of our students have been studying English for really quite a long time. So in many ways, they're quite advanced um, until it comes to actually doing something in the language, in which case they, they seem um, not to have much confidence. Uh, so for, for me, I, I feel just to echo something Ben just said, um, ER for me is a lot, is really fluency practice. So it's a chance for them to actually use the language. Um, and it's kind of like jogging, that um, it, it's, it's good for you. It builds up your um, your um strength and stamina and it makes you able to do all sorts of other things um and i also kind of think of it as an, as an antidote to the um industrial efl machine <laughs> that there's a kind of industry there's a kind of grammar industry um that's pumping out all these textbooks and uh, producing english lessons and tests and there's a kind of conveyor belt that our students have been have been put on and and I feel that um, as a university teacher that they need a, a kind of um, rehabilitation of the English language from this this test machine device. Um, and extensive reading is a very good way of doing that, of introducing, well, here's something you can read this book and actually enjoy it. Um, and you don't need to do all of this other uh, mindless, busy work that's often associated with with language teaching. Um, not just in Japan, but I think around the world. Certainly, it's very my experience of, of learning French uh, when I was a, a schoolboy in England. Um, didn't it didn't seem very relevant? Um, so, um, books. Another another factor, another feature of ER in English is that there's a very good range. English is a very resource rich language for language teaching. So, as well as all the textbooks available in English, there's also a very good range of of graded readers. Um, of course, it can always get better, um, and it is it is always getting better. But this but this is maybe in contrast to what Karina is going to tell us about. Yeah, um, unlike the English re uh, readers or students, the German or other languages that start at the university, we start from zero, so we have a hundred percent real beginners. Um, very rarely there's one student that has learned before. Uh, and the classes are usually elective or semi-elective. Semi-elective would be like a class they have to study a second language, but they can choose from French, German, Spanish, and whatever. So they have a very high motivation to learn, or a rather high motivation to learn that language, and also about the culture, which will help us later on in uh, what was mentioned before, like cultural settings in, in pictures and stories. Uh, the teaching setting is a little bit more fixed. I had the uh, feeling that if you are in charge of a beginner's class, you are supposed to cover a certain range of basic grammar or of basic communication skills for your student. On the other hand, a lot of reading the image, um, a lot of German uh, teachers, they do reading, especially in the second year, but it's intensive reading. Now, I don't think that intensive reading is bad, but it's like comparing apples to pears. They're both tasty in a different way. Uh, what I'm doing, just that you know, I've been teaching first, second, third, and sometimes fourth year students. In the first year, because of the limited language they have, I usually read to them so that I can enjoy. <laughs> and in the second year onwards, the students, uh, I ask them to read a book um, in a sustained silent reading way of 15 minutes in class, absolutely ungraded, just enjoy the book as far as you get. And in the end of the year, ask them to fulfill a questionnaire. The problem. Uh, in general, uh, in the readers' uh, levels, uh, for English, you might have 
seeing the problem that publishers vary in the level link, um, what is difficult, what is not difficult. And many of the levels are what actually also um, Dr. Fuji presented today is that there are clear uh, language levels, like not including what is included in the Yumi Asasa level of um, pictures or the size of the text and so on. Um, this comes even more into context for the non-English books um, where we do not have like what you have in English, the Yumi Asasa level so far. Uh, and then, and again, we have uh, less books especially less books at the lower level, which is a double pinch because our students have a much lower level to begin with. They have been studying one or two years only. Um, yes, um, and the cultural setting that most of the books that I know of so far, which are meant for graded, like graded readers, are in a cultural setting inside Europe because they're produced for a European market of people studying there. That might be the reason why they have a little low level books because the people who live in Germany progress much faster than when we're here. Next slide. Uh, here I want to show you just some uh, examples. Um, actually, we had one student trying to uh, use the Yumi Asasa level also on German books. And those actually, if, if anybody does German, I can recommend those books. It's a series actually from Eli. Um, and it's teen readers rather than graded readers because there's not enough other material, but the students really like them. The publisher here allocated for the one book a two and for the other book a zero, but our students said it's exactly the same level, so level 0 0.0 to 0 0.5. So she thought it's similar. It could be some other reasons why this one book is equally easy to read for her. And for the cultural background, I want to point out two books. One is, uh, in, in English, it's Emil and the Detectives. You might have known it's a book by Kestner. He um, might be the first children's book ever, other than a fairy tale, um, not being uh, um, yeah, moralistic or anything. Um, very high level, actually, but not only that. Uh, can you move on? It is published about a hundred years ago, so even though if it might it might be still a nice and fun story, but some of the setting, how people communicate, for example, a hundred years ago, and what our students have now, and it's set in 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 Europe, might put them at a pinch. And another one would be Kopf to like the scarf issue is not an issue in Japan, and most of our students. You might have had the same experience as me are not they don't feel that religion can be a problem actually or that having a scarf or no scarf is a problem but in germany it's a big debate so they might not understand what it's about and then again in my questionnaire i found what um that the students want to read real books because they're interested what the culture in that country is and they want to be yeah they want to move on maybe children's books manga they say also fairy tales a lot of them are interested in books that they know before of international bestsellers. So we added some to the library for them, but we were worried about the difficulty. Here you can see our library. Um, it's a little bit old picture. Uh, the big one is the English part and the small one is the German part. And you can see we added a lot of manga actually. Yes. And this is some of the international or Japanese books that we added and what our student actually rated them a little bit already. Yes. Um, so the research um, we've done before we looked at um, the Groffler, there's, there's, a, there's a very nice, I like, I like the title of um, Karina's German uh, presentation, which is Lesen und Lesen lassen, uh, which in English is read and let read. But I think it looks much nicer in German. Um, we were looking at reading the Gruffalo um, in another language, assessing non-graded children's picture books for extensive reading. Uh, and we were trying to find out what's difficult, um, what are the difficulties, what are the benefits of using authentic children's literature for ER in German and English language classes. Um, and we looked at some English first year students and some German second year students. Um, they read, um, they did a timed reading of the Gruffalo in English or in German, um, and then completed an anonymous questionnaire 
um, evaluating the difficulty and what was making it easy and difficult in terms of unfamiliar words and anything else that they found. Um, this was their reading speed um, along the bottom. And on the left is the number of books that they've read. Um, and the, or on the right are all the English students who have read more books and are reading faster. And on the left are the German students who have read less and are reading slower. Um, and this may may also the reading speed may also be partly from what Karina was saying before about the, the tendency to do intensive reading rather than extensive reading. And the fact that there may be better students or more dedicated students may actually mean that they're reading more slowly um, because they're um, they're reading more carefully. Um, there was a significant correlation between reading speed and perceived difficulty. Um, so the students who were reading slowly, having said that, were finding more difficulty reading. Um, the German readers found more words difficult compared to English readers. Um, and they found generally low frequency vocabulary and the grammar structures were challenging, but illustrations and repetition and storyline flow was very helpful. Um, if you're familiar, well, if you if you know the Gruffalo, you'll know um, what a great book it is. Um, and also as a as a supporting meaning, um, it has the things like this, this is he has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. So it's showing the pictures are showing exactly what the text and the story is telling you. Um, so to, like tusks and claws and jaws are quite low frequency words, um, but they're very much supported by pictures and also this repeats throughout the story so not only is it giving a, a picture of the word as, as it's introduced it's it's reusing and recycling the vocabulary which is going to help to pick it up um, and those are the german um, versions and the noble knees and the poisonous wart at the end of his nose um if we looked at we looked at the we did a lexical analysis of the story and found that for the to read the English version, you'd need the equivalent of around a 6,000 headword vocabulary um, in order to get to 98% coverage, um, which seems like a lot for a children's for children's literature. But I think we um, we sometimes forget how many words children will know, and especially if they're being read to, they may not know these words as readers. Um, but I think people pick up about a thousand words a year. So by the age of six, a native speaker child will know 6,000 words, um, which is probably a lot more than many of our university students who've studied English for, for several years. Um, another thing we, that we found is there's a very, very high repetition of words. Um, very often a, a native text will have around half the words in the text will only appear once. So half the head words will just appear one time. Um, in the Gruffalo, only about 30% of the head words appear only once. So this is a very, very high rate of repetition. Um, the German version has still has high repetition. Um, about 46% of the words in that um, appeared once. Uh, just for fun, I looked at the paper that we were writing. And in that paper, 60% of the words appeared only once, to give you a, a reference point. Um, the other thing with the German is that there are lots of ne neologisms. Um, I think I, I'm not a German speaker. It seems that they can just add, they can just put words together and make up words. German just seems like a language that's full of made up words <laughs> to start with. But um, but then these, of course, appear in the um, in the Gruffler, as indeed many, many native books do have words that have been made up for that book or for that story or for that little universe that's created, which is a very natural thing to do. Um, and the English version, according to the Tajimi Library, is at, at level um, uh, YL 1.5, um, in spite of what the, the lexical level is actually quite difficult. But because of this fantastic um, the support of the visuals and the support of the repetition, it's, a, it's at a much lower level um, than the grammar would suggest. Um, the takeaways, the key insights from this research was that authentic literature, despite vocabulary challenges, can be enjoyable with visual with visual aids and with repetitive elements and also that socio-cultural content in manga and children's books can actually help comprehension and engagement um so to the future yes um so just for checking or fun i decided uh, last year to have a 
my students read a follow-up, uh, another book from the same authors because of the repetition and pictures, and to check what was going on. Um, we read what's in English, Room on the Broom. Unfortunately, we, I didn't have time yet to make the uh, lexical analysis yet. Uh, but to give you uh, an idea, we had eight students, uh, second year students, all from the arts faculty, and three of those are from the German literature department. And the reading speed was about the same as in the Gruffalo. But unlike in the Gruffalo, a Gruffalo only four enjoyed the book. And of those, most of them were from the uh, German literature uh, department. Um, most of them, six out of eight, said there's many difficult words, and six said this, um, that there were some parts that they did not uh, understand until the end. Um, and as for the uh, nice combined words and the new, <laughs> the, just, I just put in the super luxus Hexengefährt, which was actually one of the words mentioned by our students as being very difficult. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Um, but Almost all of them pointed out as aids the pictures, but they said uh, not for the full story, but for the gist. Yeah, so it was not enough seemingly. And two also mentioned the repetition as helpful. Yes, let's have some look uh, for those who don't know the pictures. This is, we have uh, the protagonist is a witch and a, a bunch of animals. So. From the pictures, it's uh, rather understood. And you can see that unlike the Gruffalo, the, the, the words are not directly connected to the, to the um, pictures. They're close to them, but not directly to the pictures. Um, uh, and just for fun, I had a look uh, at um, some of the cultural, somewhat cultural pictures in here. Um, one could be the witch actually, because the witch in, in the European setting is an old, ugly lady, most of the time, the image, with a colorful and sometimes shabby clothes, while the Japanese witch is a cute young girl in black, neat clothes. So you have two rather different images on the one hand. On the other hand, you have um, similarities like a pointy head, a broom, and a ward. So Actually, for that, I would have to maybe ask my students if it's that the, those similarities are enough to bridge or if the students by now are just used enough to um, seeing the European witches. So which one is it disturbing or not? On the other hand, um, let's look at the dragon. Um, I think for most of us, this is clearly a dragon. I asked my little girl and she also said this is a dragon, clearly. Um, but if we take apart the European dragon. Can you show us the dragon? The European dragon is um, a dinosaur with wings. <laughs> and the Japanese is more like a big snake with uh, legs and whiskers. So you could say those are different creatures. It could be also that the students just say, oh, it's some kind of beast. So they don't care. They could say, okay, it is has enough similarities. If you look at the shape of the head or the features on the hat, there is enough similarities, or they could just say, but we have seen so many dragons in other movies. We are already culturally aware of that dragons don't have to look like the white one on the bottom. Um, so yes, again, we could say that the pictures and the repetition were considered as aids and some unfamiliarities did not interfere like being a little bit different, the witch being a little bit different, the dragon being different, the background being absolutely European or American uh, background. Um, but there were limits because the Gruffalo, as you can see again, clearly points to the meaning of the words while uh, the room on the broom does not. And from now on, well, not only have we have to um, still analyze the words directly from the from the room on the broom, uh, we want to concentrate more on books with familiar settings, as the students uh, also, or at the, as we thought, uh, manga, children's books. There's some Japanese children's books, like as Schneid. <laughs> There's an English version of that too, actually. Uh, Goody and Gura for all of those who you know. Um, but that's sometimes rather difficult to get those or world known ones like um, 
the hungry caterpillar. Uh, availability problems, on the other hand, but with manga, I'm not sure my students, I had students read manga before, which are absolutely above the level. I think they read Kimetsu no Yaiba, Demon Slayer. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure if they're not just looking at the pictures because they already have memorized the text anyway. So that's what we are looking on next. Yes, and since this starting is this year, we are supported. The beginning was not, but now we are supported from Kakeni. Yes, I think that's all. Thank you for listening, and maybe you have some advice. <laughs> uh, thank you both very much. Um, uh, does anybody have any questions? We have a couple of minutes uh, before before we can end this. Any questions from anybody? Um, Kimberly put a comment in the in the uh, in the chat box about getting help with the reading materials in German because she's wanting to establish the same sort of program in uh, New Zealand where she's at. So, I I think I uh, at the moment I don't have an updated list, but I can get an updated list of the books that we bought for the library in Shindai. We, I'm sure we can get. The one I have at the moment is from uh, almost a year ago, and we added some books in between, so you might be interested in that. Like the Schneid is not on the book list that I have at the moment, but I can get one for you. I can get one of them. Right. Oh, lovely, lovely. Uh, yes, I don't I don't know if uh, really is here at the moment or if she had to step out but um yes we can we can pass it along um as well uh she's put another question in if you have the approximate difficulty level two that would be wonderful of level of what sorry <laughs> of the books of the books for the library of the, of the books for the library i think we, um, can share, we should be able to share yes what we've got so far Yes. Um, the thing is, we have a, a vast library with, with basically all levels up to B or C, because a lot of other teachers also bought. But um, for the extensive reading, I can definitely not recommend them. We we did this for the German. It was please stay within A1. A0 is a high recommendation. And the, the teen readers, teen readers. I thought the teen readers might be too childish for my students, but they didn't mind. 